Hey, this is Justin back with an engineer's perspective and I got a quick video for you here today. Um, I've been doing some uh, copper piping in my house for a steam generator. Um, otherwise I use mostly PEX, but to save a little bit of time, I bought myself this thing, the Milwaukee M12 copper tubing cutter. Um, look it up, or 2471. Um, and uh, I really like it. Liked using it, definitely saved a heck of a lot of time over using a regular tubing cutter. But what I was curious about is, is it actually faster than a bandsaw or not? Um, I mean, bandsaw, that might be a kind of a hack way of uh, dealing with copper, but realistically speaking, hacksaw, copper, just takes seconds, it blows right through it. Um, and this is what I had used in the past. Um, my issue with it is that my edges don't always come out square, can't reach into the same places if you're working on existing stuff is the biggest problem with it. But for new install, which is what I was doing here, it made sense, but you know, I like buying tools and yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I was curious what's, which one's actually faster. Um, the biggest thing I was thinking about with that speed, though, is not actually the cutting action, but is the deburring afterwards. Is uh, the clean edge that the tubing cutter gives, yet um, concaved inward. So if you've ever used a, a tubing cutter, it actually leaves a lip on the inner, inner wall of the pipe. And so it's more that you got to get out with your deburring tool than uh, other cutting methods that don't leave that big lip in there. So is that going to make it harder to deburr versus the kind of ragged, uncleanly cut of uh, the bandsaw? And then on top of that, how successful would I be in keeping my cut square on uh, the tubing versus the tubing cutter, which will always be square? So it's kind of unsquare, jagged cut versus very square a very clean but with that inner lip cut you know which one's going to be faster and then also just the speed of the the bandsaw versus the the rotating wheel um yeah for anyone who's not familiar with this tool you stick your tubing in there it self adjusts and cuts it so really cool neat tool uh not going to cut any more of this for you guys because shit's expensive uh this is l the medium weight a three quarter copper tubing this is just a lennox uh deburring tool really like the small size of that um and i've got the thin bandsaw blade on there so i'll show you guys the kind of test footage i did three of each and i'll average out the times and then we'll talk about it so have a look at that All right, so after watching that, you can see the kind of differences in how each of these ones cut. Um, overall, the results, um, the bandsaw came out ahead. Average of the three times was 11.7 seconds on the bandsaw, and the average on the tubing cutter was 17.3 seconds. So it takes about 50% longer to use the tubing cutter. Uh, those times were determined from when I first pulled the trigger on either of them to the last turn of the deburring tool. Um, you can see in both of them, I was checking to make sure I was fully deburred on the inside, so it's kind of fair each way. Um, using them, you know, they're both easy to use. I showed the cut end afterward, the bandsaw. Each of those three cuts came out basically the same. You can see pretty dang square. I would say probably acceptably square, um, but not perfectly square. 
whereas a tubing cutter is perfectly square. Um, in terms of actual reaming time, I thought that that inner lip was going to make a bigger difference than it did. Sometimes when you're, you've got pipe up in the ceiling and you're trying to ream it, it seems like you just can't quite get that lip out of there. But down here where it's comfortable wasn't really a factor. Um, so what it really came down to was just the time to cut between the two. And you could see that the bandsaw zips right through it, whereas a tubing cutter, it takes a handful of uh, revolutions before it gets through there. And so I think that was really the difference that it came down to. Um, in terms of what you should buy, I mean, if you're a pro plumber, you should probably have this. You probably should have a bandsaw too. Um, if you're a DIYer, a homeowner, or somebody just looking at it, um, the bandsaw is going to be a lot more universal of a tool. It's also going to be a much more expensive tool, but I think uh, it's probably the better buy. It's way less niche than, than this one's going to be. Um, however, this one is going to be a lot less prone to those squared off errors. So I guess you could take that into account, but the, the ergos of, uh, of this tool um, and just yeah, that precise cut and being able to get into places, I, I do appreciate about this one. So I like it. I'm going to keep it for the foreseeable future. But uh, yeah, so winner, I'd say is the bandsaw. Cuts were adequate, uh, adequate quality, and it was 50% or a third, two thirds of the, the speed, two thirds of the time required. Whereas this was, took 50% more time to, to make those cuts. Um, and yeah, so those should have been on the screen there for you guys to look at. So yeah, that's the breakdown between them. Was it worth buying this? Uh, the tubing cutter? Probably not, but I do like it and I'm going to keep using it for the copper that I do. So that's all I've got for today. Have a good one. Bye.